Today is my 111th birthday. I am 11 today. Hooray! Hooray! Many happy returns! They shouted and they hammered joyously on the tables. Bilbo was doing splendidly. This was the sort of stuff they liked. Short and obvious. I hope you are all enjoying yourselves as much as I am. Deafening cheers, cries of yes and no, noises of trumpets and horns, pipes and flutes and other musical instruments. There were, as has been said, many young hobbits present. Hundreds of musical crackers had been pulled. Most of them bore the mark Dale on them, which did not convey much to most of the hobbits, but they all agreed they were marvellous crackers. They contained Instruments, small but of perfect make and enchanting tones. Indeed, in one corner, some of the young Tooks and Brandybucks, supposing Uncle Bilbo to have finished, since he had plainly said all that was necessary, now got up an impromptu orchestra and began making a merry dance tune. Master Everard Took and Miss Mellitot Brandybuck got on a table and with bells in their hands began to dance the Springle Ring. A pretty dance, but rather vigorous. But Bilbo had not finished. Seizing a horn from a youngster nearby, he blew three loud hoots. The noise subsided. I, I, I shall not keep you long, he cried cheers from the assembly. I have called you all together for a purpose. Something in the way that he said this made an impression. There was almost silence, and one or two of the Tooks pricked up their ears. Indeed, for three purposes. First of all, to tell you that I am immensely fond of you all, and that uh, eleventy-one years is too short a time to live among such excellent and admirable hobbits. Tremendous outburst of approval. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you as well as you deserve. <laughs> this was unexpected and rather difficult. There was some scattered clapping, but most of them were trying to work it out and see if it came to a compliment. Uh, secondly, to celebrate my birthday. Cheers again. Or, or should I say, our birthday, for it is, of course, also the birthday of my heir and nephew Frodo. He comes of age and into his inheritance today. Some perfunctory clapping by the elders and some loud shouts of, Frodo, Frodo, jolly old Frodo, from the juniors. The Sackville Bagginses scowled and wondered what was meant by coming into his inheritance. Together we score one hundred and forty-four. Your numbers were chosen to fit this remarkable total. One gross, if I may use the expression. No cheers. This was ridiculous. Many of the guests, especially the Sackville Bagginses, were insulted. Feeling sure that they had only been asked to fill up the required number like goods in a package. One gross indeed. Vulgar expression. It is also, if I may be allowed to refer to ancient history, the anniversary of my arrival by barrel at Esgaroth on the Long Lake, though the, the fact that it was my birthday slipped my memory on that occasion. I was, I was only fifty-one then, and birthdays did not seem so important. The banquet was very splendid, however, though I had a bad cold at the time, I remember, and could only say, thank you very much. <laughs> now I now repeat it more correctly. Thank you very much for coming to my little party. Obstinate silence. They all feared that a song or some poetry was now imminent, and they were getting bored. 
Why couldn't he stop talking and let them drink his health? But Bilbo did not sing or recite. He paused for a moment. Thirdly and finally, he said, I wish to make an announcement. He spoke this last word so loudly and suddenly that everyone sat up who still could. I regret to announce, though, as I said, eleventy-one years is far too short a time to spend among you. This is the end. I am going. I am leaving. Now! Goodbye!